Ah, uh, Bobless Amigos. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Club Lucha Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Foos, alongside Floak and Soups. How y'all doing today? I'm doing good. Good. It's not like we haven't spent the last half an hour figuring out Raiders' life story. So <laughs> we, we've got a lot. We've got a lot for you guys today. Um, That's a lie. <laughs> we've got a we've got a ton of great content. Yeah, look, we may not have a ton of stuff to talk about today, but we have a ton of good stuff to talk about, right? Yeah, we'll probably yeah, we'll find a way to you know dabble these conversations like twenty minutes, twenty, <laughs> 20 minutes, thirty yeah. minutes. We'll see. The first thing, the first thing we're talking about, of course, we're doing a lucha flashback, and um, we picked one that is, well, originally we were gonna do a poll and ask you guys to pick one for us, but I forgot to put we the poll up. To, yeah, yeah, on Twitter, we forgot to put it up. I'll take responsibility for that one. I'll put the poll up for next week's directly after doing this episode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, we'll take three the next week. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah never mind. We got. No, we can that. do one for that. We can do one for that. It'll be a. It'll be a white boys. Uh, Lucha white boys poll. Yeah. Put to Jack Evans, uh, Jake Evans, Marco Corleone, and uh, who should be our third? Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts. Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Solomon Grundy. <laughs> you can do so, Andre the Giant. <laughs> I Andre the Giant. Vampiro. No. <laughs> I don't want to do Vampiro. We do Vampiro oh, and uh, Rey Bucanero hair versus hair. Where like Rey <laughs> Bucanero just takes out it. Anyway. I'd rather watch for Spirata Morgan. <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, the Lucha flashback for this week is very pertinent to the events of this week. Um, seeing as how on Friday, Death Triangle, uh, the Lucha Brothers, Pentelcero Miedo, um, Rey Phoenix, and Pac, will be coming to Arena Mexico. So the match we've picked for this week is a Lucha Brothers match, one of them. Rey Fenix, or as he was called in CML at that time, King Fenix against Bárbaro Cabernario. Their second match, the Leyenda de Plata final. And it also connects because Leyenda de Plata final is this Friday too. So this is the perfect match to, to talk about, right? Yep, got done dirty this year though. <laughs> we'll talk about that later but uh what's you guys impressions on this match going in um how do you watch their first match did that give you uh an expectation for this one if you hadn't seen this one yet uh i don't i'd already watched the previous i had already watched the previous match because of course i have um but you know i i whenever they ask me about which one i prefer i usually i prefer this one but last time I had watched this one, uh, maybe it's because I had watched a little bit too much, or you know, maybe you know, I was just I wasn't paying attention too much to the to the match last time that I watched it. But I I, I definitely enjoyed it way more watching it uh, rewatching it now than the last time I watched the this Leyenda de Plata final. Awesome, it's awesome, Soups. Um, had you seen the first one, or is this this the first one you watched between the two? This was the first match I've seen between these two. Does it make you want to watch the first one though? Oh hell yeah, yeah! I I probably <laughs> should have done that before, and I definitely will now. It's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah I, we'll get into it in a little bit, but man, this match is like perfect. Unless uh, you're a certain observer of wrestling, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great, great match. It's an awesome, awesome match. So we have some very positive impressions. Um, Soups, who'd never seen the first one. Obviously, this match was so good, it makes him want to go watch the first one as well. Um, so, I mean, I think that's as good as we can put over a match without going into too much details about it, which we're going to do anyways, because that's what we do on the Lucha Flashback, right? Anyway, yes. getting into that match. Um, starting out, what were we thinking um, as you're watching this thing, you know? Um, what were your thoughts on how the match started out? Entrances, looks, anything of that, anything that would, I guess, fall into that first impression sort of umbrella. Hello? Uh, first of all, had really good pacing. Uh, you know, didn't have a sudden finish. You know, Phoenix used the Phoenix driver, and you know, he was, you know, they got they got some stuff in, but you know, just like the stuff that you would usually get for you know, like a normal first fall. So you know, good start. You know, 
didn't do you didn't have to over deliver didn't under deliver it was just you know good enough and you know I, i'm not complaining sure for sure i have it in my notes here i was um i wrote down that like they i mean they they kicked it phoenix especially kicked it into uh to me it felt like he was kicking it into like a second fall gear in the first fall um he did a lot of dives to the outside, stuff like that. There wasn't really um, a lot of, like, mat wrestling. There wasn't really a ton of grappling. Um, but that's yeah. that's not a problem. I mean, it was intense. It was This is a final, you know? So we're not uh, we're not throwing up uh, chin locks <laughs> in the first <laughs> fall. But, um, I mean, they might have. The message I'm sending here is, I mean, they were they were cooking early. They were definitely cooking early. Zoops can back me up on this one, this point. Um, Barbaro Cabernario is looking insane um i mean that, that's the most in shape i think i've ever seen him and i'm not saying he's in bad shape now i think he's in pretty decent shape now but like this night Gabernadio, golly man like he he was looking yoked yeah yeah he was what did we say he was on the uh the hunter gatherer diet here he was on that <laughs> true caveman stuff he was not eating i mean but like what was he was foraging sure like he was not eating no bread there was no nah, rice nah. 100% beef elk deer other assorted <laughs> mammals big venison guy yeah yeah nuts <laughs> berries berries <laughs> whatever birds he can catch rabbits squirrels i mean he looked big like really really he had like a six pack bro like yeah, like the real six pack too. Like this guy was all natural, you know, just my goodness. Woof. He was he was looking big, like real big. And like like I was saying, like I don't think he's in bad shape right now. Um, but like this this was a different beast, man. <laughs> like Yeah, absolutely. Looking solid. Uh, this isn't super important, but King Phoenix. For, I guess the people who were not so familiar, he had to use that name because he couldn't go by Ray Phoenix. Uh, Triple A, I think Triple A had like something on the name. They or, or yeah. CMLL yeah. gave him CMLL gives names so that like they can use or they own or something like that. Um, yeah. it's just a slight deviation on it means the same thing. It's, it's Ray yeah. Phoenix, yeah, but um. Good stuff. I agree that the first fall was awesome. What do you think about the second fall, Soups? Uh the second fall was great. I like the uh the finish for the second fall was sensational with uh when we were watching the match, Fu said just before it happened. All right, this is it. And Phoenix does a topic on hero to the outside, lands flat on his back. And then takes a splash from the top to the floor from Barbaro Cavernario. Uh, then we get a count out for the second fall. But this dude bounced like a damn Spalding. Uh, <laughs> I, I was shook to my core when I saw that. It made, it, it made me like it made me like feel a pain in my chest, dog. Like, <laughs> like I feel like if a normal like. That's the kind of I, I I'm getting like hung up on my words here, but that's the kind of bump that like you look at and you're like, are you like genuinely okay? Yeah, yeah. It's like why? Like when we were talking about it earlier, like you have to be the person to suggest doing that. <laughs> like no one else can say, hey, you know what you should do today? You should die. Like <laughs> Phoenix went out there and said, okay, I'm gonna go for this. You're gonna move. <laughs> and I'm just, you know, something's gonna happen. He, he was like, I want to see something really awesome. And <laughs> yeah. they, were, they were at the back, like, what do you got back there? They're probably like, don't ever do that again, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. That that spot is just burned into my head. The first time I saw it, I couldn't believe it. I, I could not believe it. And I rewound it and I watched it again. And then. Every time I see this match or like a compilation highlights of this match, I wait for it because it's <laughs> so good. It was filmed perfectly too. Like it was, oh my God. 
I let yes. you try to get like the perfect picture. Like, yeah, he was, you see him going he was right. Laid down, yeah, it was like getting real close. <laughs> just laying down with the fucking camera just right there. We got to check the archives to see if he has Phoenix mid bounce off of the ground. See how high he got. He, he, God almighty. Like that would knock the wind out of you. That'd knock the lunch out of you. Knock the yeah, like, rings out of you. Like, oh. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. I think I would die. <laughs> like, I would break every bone in my body. That would be like yeah, yeah. everything gasping for air. It would look like a Mortal Kombat. It would like it would look like just a Mortal Kombat actually. That's what it would look like. Just <laughs> Yeah. Ball. And then not not even 10 seconds later, he has Barbaro jumping onto his chest. <laughs> yes, bro. <laughs> that Cabernario uh, plancha like that splash. He only does he only does that dead spot on uh, big shows. Yeah. We were saying and, this, but motivated Cabernario, my God, what a beat. Yeah. I mean, just very good second fall. And I mean, like we were mentioning, Phoenix couldn't even get back in the ring and Cabernario won by count out. I think that makes the fall extra good too, because like, that's so realistic. I wouldn't be able to get back in the ring after that at all. <laughs> nah, that's, that, that would be insanely painful. Like, that's it. That's it. And the thing is, too, I think the thing that helps the, this spot um, helps the match so much is, um, I guess we can come back to it after we talk about the third fall, but let's keep, I'm going to keep a bookmark on that. The third fall, Flug, what would you think about that? What are we thinking about that fall? Last one. The ramp dive. Mm-hmm. The, ramp, the, the ramp dive beast. I mean, they were they were basically just giving it their all at the the final fall. You know, they were trying, they were pulling out. You know, they were pulling out all. You know, all the stops in the final fall. You know, it was like Phoenix was gonna go for like a muscle buster almost, but instead he just like ended up sort of dropping Barbaro Cavernario on, onto the mat. And then, you know, Cavernario hit the Caver, Barbaro Cavernario hit the Cavernaria one, and you know, it almost looked like Phoenix was gonna tap out, but he didn't. And then you know later on, it would maybe. Get him, get him the victory. But you know, we also had the the big plancha yet again from the ramp, you know, from the stage, from the top of the stage. Which you know, hearing that now, it might sound a little crazy. You know, from the top of the stage where the CMO wrestlers come out, yeah, it it looked, it looked that also sounds like it would be painful because trust me, it, it probably was. Um, and but around that time in CMO, uh. Ramp dive, I mean, the stage dives were, like, pretty common. So, looking back at it, it might seem a little more special now. But at that time, it probably wasn't as, you know, special. But whenever you rewatch it, just, man, it looks it looks brutal. And then, Cavernario immediately, you know, he's, like, he's trying to get Phoenix back into the ring. And, you know, just trying to, trying to finish him off. That was brutal. Like, um, you were saying that uh, stage dive... God almighty. The thing is, too, we keep saying it. Cabernario is like 1% body fat here. <laughs> like, yeah. I know it, it must have felt like a 200-pound cinder block just fell on Phoenix's uh, torso with that. Like, I don't know what I would do if I took that. i just sit there. Hoo! That's it. <laughs> you know? He, he grabs him by the mask and drags him into the ring, like you were saying. Nuts. It's nuts. I don't know, man. I have here too. I really like the rope walk. Uh, Barbara Cabernario was standing on the apron, um, and Phoenix. Uh, he did like the rope walk instead of the kick, though. He did like a, a lan like a lanza, like a double stomp. Yeah, yeah. He did a lanza onto a, like Barbara Cabernario's like upper back. Yeah, took uh, Cabernario down to the outside. That was awesome. Um, God, that splash was awesome. Just. The crowd too, super hot, super super yeah, hot. Yeah, the, the crowd sort of shifted and they started cheering a lot more for Cavernario near that third fall. <laughs> yeah, but um, Sus, what you think about the finish? What do you think about that um, Cavernario submission there at the end? I think um, I, that might be my favorite submission in lucha. Um, maybe the Romero special, La Tapatia, but. I just love how vicious the Cavanaria looks. Um, and it's even better when a caveman's hitting it. So uh, 
yeah, I love the finish to it. Um, both of these guys looked incredible. Um, visually, uh, both of these guys, I think this is like their peak physical conditions, but uh, it's a nice reminder that Phoenix is just one of the best wrestlers in the world still, and he should get to show that more wherever that may be. Um, and Barbaro's Barbaro. Awesome. I agree. hundred percent. Um, golly, I just keep, I don't know. Just the, I, I think what really, really, what makes it work even more for me is like how much punishment Phoenix took to his torso and his back. I mean, like if you combine, um, I mean, all of, all of Barbaro Cabernario's moves like in the ring, suplexes and just various things that, target the back but then like the the tope bounce to the ground the splash the splash off the uh stage all that combined and then like the first cabernaria wears him down and then the second one like seemingly i don't know if it really injured him but i mean they took him out on the stretcher you know like that was whew. It doesn't get better than that you know yeah that's that real shit right there everything comes together and it makes this really cohesive uh like really just wonderful story that they're telling with Barro Cabernario coming out, just being a little more brutal, um, imposing his will a little more and, and getting revenge uh, on that first loss that he took, which correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the first match Phoenix won with that uh, kind of like the move that looked like the muscle buster into a Michinoku driver. I don't know if it's called the fire driver, I saw that name online. I don't know if that's what he calls it, but I think that's how he won that first match, uh, the third fall for that first match that they had. So good, good, good stuff. Anyways, we can we can transition that into uh, talking about CMLL this upcoming Friday, but I guess before then we have to talk about the results for CMLL. Last Friday... um. What did you guys think of that show? I think we're going to have varying uh, impressions here. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you can go first. I mean, you can go first. I insist I go last. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be better for Flo to go last here. <laughs> he'll, he'll extinguish our flames. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was... Last Friday was all right. I thought it was pretty good. Um Nothing like revolutionary. Um, I'm on record in various places liking the Apuestas feud that's going on right now. So I did enjoy that match. Uh, Isfinghe continues to get low blowed and get absolutely packed, but you know, we ball. Um, the uh, Land of the Plata stuff was good. Um, the uh, the ending was a little weird with Mystico having his hand on the rope. Um, Star Jr. winning anyway, but I guess that's how you keep the big dog strong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and then I'm sure this will transition to uh, Floke's thoughts perfectly because I think this may have been his jumping off point. Uh, we saw a certain somebody from a certain American promotion uh, show up and it was a buzzkill. And uh, yeah, Floke, you wanna you wanna build on that? Sure. <laughs> All right. So let me get this. Let me let me start right off. Opener, good stuff. Calaveras, great. We actually that was really good. Yeah. Great team. You know, great young, talented team. Um, you know, I would like to see them hopefully get featured more on. You know, maybe for their opening rookie year, op opening rookie years. You know, keep them in the openers. You know. Maybe that'll convince some people to, you know, get the CMO subscription. They see this, these two skeleton dudes, you know, doing a bunch of crazy dives, you know, <laughs> having great teamwork. You know, I feel like they could get some subscriptions, you know, or some memberships for the YouTube. Um, you know, Capitan Suicida, always great whenever he's around. Uh, I, I actually I actually enjoyed the second match. I did not think I would enjoy the uh, Fuerza Poblana versus Chacales at a ring match as much, but uh, I did. I did quite enjoy that match. Um, I mean, you know, it's your standard... Puerto Poblana and uh, Chacales at ring match, you know, they've had, they've faced, you know, maybe two or three times before, probably more, but 
you know, they saw that effort all around from almost everyone. You know, it got a little bit clumsy towards, like, the final fall, but, you know, I still think it was a good match. Um, women's match, don't really have too many thoughts on that besides, you know, Tessa Blanchard is still garbage. Um, <laughs> uh, then, you know, the uh, the Valiente Euphoria, Ultimo Guerrero versus uh, Atlantis Jr. as VNK and a Chisero match. I'm beyond, I even tweeted about this. I'm not hyped. I'm not hyped. Like in the slightest for this anniversary of you at all, I'm. I don't know if right. You know there was a chance for it to maybe be a cage match because you know maybe they were gonna add a few more rivalries and stuff like that. But I don't even think it's leading to that anymore because as of now, for a few weeks we haven't really gotten any developments on the Volador Junior and Averno feud, or you know we barely just. Uh, we barely got any developments with uh, the Ultimo Guerrero and Templario feud besides after the singles match, you know, Templario saying that he's going to switch with Tecnico. So right now, the only two main rivalries that we had were, uh, that we have right now are uh, Valiente and Echicero and then Euphoria and Esfinge. And, I mean, the match kind of just turned to chaos at the end of it. You know, everybody was fighting, you know, the four men, the the final four men that I just previously listed, you know, they were fighting, you know, they were talking on the mic saying like, oh, I want to face you. I want your mask. I don't care what it takes. I just want one. I, I'm, I'm, I don't do whatever I need to do to take your mask, you know, and let's be honest, it, it's probably just going to end up with the two people that started in the feud. So I think kind of Horia and I mean, just who wants who actually wants to see that? Like, you're telling me that we already have to deal with like I know the man, the fans in Mexico are loving that you know Chris Jericho's returning. You know that's fine, I I understand that. But you know having already a headliner with you know a Jericho that can barely work against Mistico that can that really only puts effort in whenever he he wants to, and then the the, the Apuestas feud is oh, is gonna probably end up being a Foria versus Finge. Like just two horrible combinations that will likely need to be carried by an insanely stacked undercard. So I mean. And if it's Vink ends up winning, it's gonna be like, oh great! Rest, um, probably the most mediocre to average wrestler in CML oh. is getting um, <laughs> getting such an undeserved main event push. Like we're letting him, we're letting Phil Cook right now, crazy man. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? Just, cut his mic. Cut his mic. Cut his just, <laughs> why? Just I don't understand. I this is the pipe bomb of the Club Lucha podcast. You're listening I to it right now. I would have preferred to see it. Magnus versus Mystico at the anniversary. Oh, and my, God. oh my God. Basara and having to see the most mediocre wrestler in CML oh. having a big mask win at the anniversary. Oh, I'm man. sorry. Oh, Ford is going to have to powerbomb that man off the stage if he wants me to even get slightly hyped in that match. I'm sorry, but no, I have like, no interest for me like at all. I'm sure Mystico, if Mystico puts in enough effort, it might be a decent match against Jericho, but Esfinke versus Euphoria is like just bottom of the barrel like there's gonna i mean he'll probably i think he'll probably go up as like one of the least deserving winners of an aniversario apuestas match probably up there next to rayo de jalisco jr you know ah lee just and then leyenda and then leyenda de plata you know it started and then you know how soups was mentioning we had a certain wrestler you know <laughs> mjf appear and you know a few matches had already gone by and then you know he popped up and i'm like oh boy and oh great he's gonna come what like two fridays from now and he's gonna defend his title and he's probably gonna be racist and you know cut some very <laughs> crappy promos on the mic saying oh america is the number one country in the world this and that i don't yeah. care mjf is a garbage wrestler he tries to do everything but he's so horrible at doing everything at the same time he's uh, uh he's really gonna come down to mexico and do the shit sam adonis was doing eight yeah. years ago and it'll be yeah. less funny because it won't yeah. be novel anymore exactly and it's just like why i mean i'm sure we're gonna talk about who is going to face him a little later on um they'll probably be able to get a good match out of him hopefully um but just after this i think there was like a, just like a few i think it was like what just two or three more matches left for la leyenda de plata block b and by this I, I just clocked out of the show man i was so done i just and then i i just you know i just tuned into uh tjpw after that instead he was watching triple a no i was not <laughs> I, went, I went to go watch uh miyu, miyu watanabe versus rika tatsumi instead 
Look, you remember when Conan said, what comes around, goes around. He was talking about Flo. He recruited Flo away from Tom. <laughs> <Yeah. Tom. laughs> <Dude. laughs> no, but... Um, you me... think that? Hell no. Uh, look, think okay. That's why there's an even... There's an even lesser chance I'll watch Super Mario than Mexico without <laughs> wanting to go to sleep at least five times. In We're the gonna first have to watch night. that. We're gonna have to watch that. But um, all right. Oh, uh, let me give let me give my rundown really quick. I agree. Calaveras was good. Fuerza Poblana was good. Um, I think Calaveras was better than Fuerza Poblana and Chacalas de Ring. Um, Yubia, Scotty, Tessa against uh, Era, Reina Isis and Duxis. Um. It was good. It was. It wasn't like. Didn't, no, I, I can't. Re- I didn't really stand out, but it wasn't. I don't remember it being like horrible or anything. But like, it went along, and they had a, eh, you know, pretty middle of the road match. Uh, all things considered, I, I don't hate. Okay, I'm. I'm kind of agreeing on a few fronts, on a few of the points you made, but maybe not to the same degree, because I don't hate the idea. Of a Sphinx uh, Euphoria, but it has to get there. Like, we're not there yet, you know? Like, if it can get there um, by the Aniversario, if it can get to the level it needs to get to, and like, if the intrigue can be raised a little more, then I'll be more into it. Right now, if they were to do the Aniversario this, like, this Friday, uh, it's not for me, but I feel like they are definitely trying. They're trying to make this happen. And if they can get there, I won't have a problem with it, but, you know, I'm not sure. I do think, though, of the four people involved, I would much rather see Valiente Echicero. Um, just because... Everyone would. <laughs> yeah, they're I mean, they're more, a little more interesting, <laughs> I think. They, I think they just match up better. Um, they both have more... Um, I guess unique styles than like a swing head. Like, you know, I don't, I don't think a swing head is like the worst guy on the roster. Like, but you know, Nudo, he, Nudo he's Hipsio not, he's really nothing special. He's nothing special. He's a gear, he's in a gear and entrance <laughs> merchant. That's what he is. <laughs> I mean, that's a big, that's a big part of it sometimes too. But, um, as for MJF, I'm whatever on it. I, I don't really have, super strong feelings about it um kind of could see this like not him specifically but i figured at some point that international title would come to cml hall um i was a bit surprised it, it was on his waist i honestly expected osprey more than mjf Dude, but i would i would um, i'm not even big on osprey but i would have preferred uh, osprey you know a hundred times more than mjf yeah, here's the thing though. I do think he's gonna get um, even if he does like the American. But I feel like digging him on that too much. I can't really do that because like every American gets booed, basically. You know, like anybody, especially if like CMLL brings up the fact that they're Americans, and I mean he's gonna come yeah. with that uh, that American ass belt. Um, I would not be shocked if he wore red, white, and blue trunks, and then like. Oh, uh, that's yeah, that's a layup at this knee point. Knee pads, yeah. maybe like a red, white, and blue, like almost like a Rocky esque, uh, like a uh, robe down to the yeah. ring. Like those are the things I'm expecting. This. Let me just say this: I really wish Flip Gordon would have been the one to win the. No. Uh, I really wish he would have been the one just to piss off AW fans. I <laughs> oh, really, okay, well, yeah, that would be I funny. Wish, man. We would have spent all week defending Flip Gordon, though. I just don't have the energy for that dude, this week. And we do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I would, dude, I would have been Flip Gordon's strongest soldier for a week, bro. That's how that's... People have really people have really strong opinions on Flip Gordon who have not watched him, like, for the entire year. Like... They haven't watched him since 2018. <laughs> and that was me before he showed up this year. <laughs> me neither. I I was not watching no Flip Gordon. He showed up. <laughs> The first, like the first, like nah, two Sus- months. Sus- watching control your narrative. No, no. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> the first two months, and I, we even talked about it on the podcast. I'm pretty sure, or if we well, didn't talk about it on the podcast, we talked about it, uh, tweeted about it, or we sent messages about it. But we were not. I don't think any of us were hot on Flip Gordon when he first arrived. No, we were the opposite. He was in the <laughs> Tesla camp for the longest time. He won us over though. Like, I mean, 
He's put in the effort. He's had good yeah, matches with over, multiple people. One over is a strong statement. I can tolerate Flip Gordon. Here, here's the deal. He's you, gonna win you over eventually, brother. If you're a white boy in Mexico and you're doing flips, I mean, you're you're already cooking, <laughs> and it's only a matter of time until it works. Oh man, I I think that um, he's definitely. I mean, I, 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 I won't, I'm not afraid to say, I think he's won me over and his work has definitely, um, I'm impressed and, uh, enjoying his work, uh, when he's in a lot of singles matches, even, uh, even like tags and trios, I think he, he's yeah. keeping up really well and he's contributing a lot. So he's, uh, he's got me looking at the earth a little different <laughs> questions and <laughs> stuff. Look, I'm just saying, I was looking at the horizon, and it did not look curved at all, brother. Yeah, it looked day, man. It looked like a level plane to me. Every time I get in an airplane, I look down, and I'm like, what are they keeping from me? <laughs> but, um... Oh, we're not turning this to a flat earth or podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, of course, we're being uh, ironic here. We're not actually yes, flat earth. Yes, yeah, we are, we are joking. Earth is round. Sorry about that one, Floyd. <laughs> DM me, we can talk about it. Maybe you can win me over there too. But um, yeah, yes. Yeah. We'll get him on the pod too. Yeah. Uh, he can. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, we're not getting Flip Gordon on the podcast of what to explain why the earth is black. <laughs> I think that maybe if we really tried hard enough, I think that with enough, with the right messages, we could get Flip Gordon to come on. Oh, I don't know whether we. I don't know that we will. Yeah, just, don't, just don't listen to the previous like fifteen episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh. Let's start a new feed. We think you're awesome, Flip, right now. Oh, yeah, you're, you're cooking right now, buddy. Anyway, anyway. Um, no, that would have made AEW fans super mad. Um, oh, I would have I would have enjoyed it. I would have... That would have been mad funny. But yeah. I think if, if Templario comes out in the uh, red, white, and green, and um, MJF comes out in the red, white, and blue, I think it's going to be loud. Definitely next Friday is going to be really loud. And, uh, you know, I think just based on atmosphere and ambiance, like that, that adds a lot to a match, you know, I hope it doesn't main event. I hope it gets a semi main and we just get a, a normal six man. No, random. it's main event and brother. Kyle Fletcher main evented. MJR. Yeah. Oh, Come on, the, the ROH TV time. title main evented. Oh, this is the one time I'm begging for a mystical main event. Please. Oh, my. <laughs> no, Mystico's coming out at the end to shoot an angle, but. uh, Yeah, it's <laughs> planned. But uh, it's, it's, it's going to be hot. It's definitely going to be loud. And. I like how we didn't even talk about who, who won the, the Black Beaver. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The winner, the winner for. Yeah, yeah. 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 Star Jr. So, won yeah, off of uh, Misiko grabbing the rope and the ref didn't see it. Star Jr. got the pit. Big, yeah. uh, big congratulations to Angel de Oro for his uh, land at <laughs> the plateau win. <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah, Star mean, Jr. won... Back, yeah, Copa Jr. So there's there's no way he wins the end of the plata. So uh, congrats to, to Angel de Oro. You know, early... Early celebration, but you know, we already know. <laughs> We're popping bottles already. Yeah. <laughs> How crazy would it be if on Friday he lost again? <laughs> oh, I'm no, I'm getting can- roasted I'm, crazy. I'm, I'm canceling that membership. No, no. <laughs> Crash it out I'm crazy. Canceling that, I'm canceling that membership and uh, becoming a member to the Mas Lucha channel. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Folks, I'm about to start putting up uh, damn CM Punk uh, status <laughs> updates on his tweets. Nobody texts. <laughs> All around me are fakes. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a legendary yeah. crash out. Yeah, no, I think you gotta log off everything. Yeah, he if he doesn't win, there's something wrong. Yeah, ninety nine percent entertain the idea. Uh, yeah. Junior got so got uh, he he has some blackmail on someone. I know that. <laughs> hey man, Esfing is better than Star Junior. MLW is no, politic not. and hard, bro. Like they're like oh, you know, be God. awesome. <laughs> That guy we we book a lot. Like he looks really good over here. You guys should put him in uh, the finals for that tournament y'all got going. <laughs> Court Bowers politicking. Look, but definitely Tony K put in the boss call, dude. Like MJF's main event, and he's gonna talk about it. Just getting everybody ready. Uh, not next dynamite, but the dynamite after that. He's definitely gonna be talking about it. He's gonna be like, 
I went down to Mexico. Oh, no. It's going to be probably not a great promo he's going to give. Uh, the same promo he gives a lot, but talk about Templario. He's going to be like, I, I beat the best they had to give. Come on, man. Did MJF go? Has he been to Three Plata? Did he go? Uh, Some, I don't even fucking I feel like Cody that's Rhodes right, win? but I, I could. Yeah, was he, ma- maybe. It was, the, it was either that or I think it was the crash. One of those two things. Uh, right? Yeah. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna bother searching at looking at cage match right now. <laughs> That's how I felt. But yeah. I'm anyway, not interested in searching at where MJF was at that point. I really don't. I did think the um the Leyenda de Plata matches for this week. I remember watching them and being like, these are going uh, like uh, quite a bit longer than they did last week, and they felt like they gave a little more effort on them this week. So for me, I thought this week's show was um a bit better than last week's. Noticeably, I think at least. I want to say, way better, but better. I still, I still, I still think the tournament this year was overall pretty disappointing. They really should have just been two torneos y Bernaticos instead of knockout. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. agree with that. And I think the best uh, evidence of that came on Tuesday, right? Yes. That um, Ibernetico to get a title shot against MJF, which uh, Templario won. I thought that was good, Ibernetico. I thought. It that flew really by. I, I, the closing stretch, the closing stretch between Averno and Templario was really good. Yeah, that one was like, I don't know, like compared to the slogs. It was better, through the it, it was man better than every way. single knockout match they had for Leandro de Plata. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. I'm with with, uh, I guess guys lower on the uh, totem pole as well. Really, yep. not that much lower, but. I mean, it was like Rugido, Espinje, Flip, Valiente, Santoca, Naverno, and Templario. Mid card to lower upper card, oh, I guess. Yeah. Guys. What did you guys think about Neon and uh, Barbaro Cavernario? Uh, I thought it was all right. I thought it, could, I thought it should have gone a little longer, but man, Edgar, you, you screwed up. <laughs> yeah pretty much echo that exactly i thought it was i thought it was good um but yeah that i like looked away for a second and then it was over and then i just saw everyone acting confused and i was like oh god it looked even worse on the the replay yeah <sighs> like you could clearly see barbaro cavernario kicking out edgar uh the thing was too like that was that was a good match until the end yeah you know, not their fault at all. Neon and Barro Cabernario faultless in this match. That's all on Edgar. That's all on him. So, Olympico's better. <laughs> Tough break. <laughs> Tough break. Um, also, yeah. I really I liked uh, Gemelos Diablos and uh, Cranio against Los Atrapasueños. I like that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. And I'm going to continue saying it. Reiko Meta, the most underrated wrestler in the world. That's a top five wrestler in CML right there. Oh, my. I got him in the mid card, brother. And you know what? I'm going to say it. He's better than Templario, too. Oh, my Damn. days. Oh, come God. Come at me. Come at me. Yo, man. Floke's, Floke's on one. You. Crazy today. I, I don't That's think it's a, a... You're brave for saying it. I don't think it's a super hot take. But I definitely think people are, like, more... Uh, familiar yeah. with, yeah, they're more familiar with Templario's yeah. work because he's man, they don't, they featured don't understand. more. They haven't watched some of Recometa's best matches. That man goes crazy. Then but yeah, that's to Informa. Some good, some awesome news on Informa, actually. Um, so the main oh, but, things. Oh uh, yeah. You want, you want to say it? Or you want me to say it? You can, you can say. It. I guess. Hold on. Yeah, you can say it. And I'll list off the the, the teams. All right, so uh, the main thing, main news, first bit of uh, big news is there is a women's tag team tournament determining the new CMLL World Women's Tag Camps. First part, yeah, first part is on July 30th. Second part, uh, or the final, is August 6th. The teams are... We have... You know, the current national 
the current national female tag team champions, Kiran Skadi, the uh, the unfortunate tag team of uh, Yuvia <laughs> and Tessa Blanchard. Uh, we also have Dark Silhueta and Valkyria, uh, Sanelli and Nautica, Era and Olympia, Reina Isis and Metallica, Soxis and Persephone, pretty cool team. And uh, uh, so, so this is supposedly a surprise tag team when it's really just two, <laughs> two of the wrestlers coming back from injuries. Um, Princesa Suheit and uh, La Catalina. Th- those are the tag teams. It's yeah, crazy yeah. funny how we were uh, talking about earlier, how we were like, <laughs> they teased a mystery team and we all thought it was going to be an outside team. And then the very yeah. next segment, they were like, this is yeah. our mystery team. <laughs> Princesa yeah. Suheit. In La Catalina. Yeah, I was like, like you were saying, I was thinking an outsider time. I was like, whoa, is there a slight? Is there like the slightest chance that CML is gonna acknowledge Stardom's existence? No, but it's that's we Who do y'all want to win? Who do y'all think he's gonna take it? Just give, uh, uh, I hope Giran Scali, honestly. Yeah. Hmm. Persephone Giran... and Se- Sexies, right? Their team, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's, that's that's uh, Persephone just keeps getting better and better, so that would be nice to see. You already know who I'm picking. Ed on Olympia, bro. I'm putting it, put it. I'm betting the house on Ed on Olympia. Um, Ed on, dude, that, that's a bold pick. They're probably gonna get a little, <laughs> like four. <laughs> yeah, they're not. They're not yeah. winning. They're not winning. But that's why I want to win. <laughs> it should be Kiran Skadi. Like CML's main goal right now should just be you know. Give that big push to Kira right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of teams definitely not winning. I don't think Reina Isis and Metallica are winning. Sanelli yeah, is no. not winning. Dark Silhueta is really good, but she's not winning. Um, Dog, the, the fact that, and... Yeah, the fact that they have a chance of winning is scary. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they don't win. Maybe they Hopefully. do. Hopefully. We're hoping they don't win. Because then, I mean, they're really just not even the best team on this list. Like, they're not. No. And then, uh, the times they've tagged together have just been average, yeah. very poor. Princesa Suhei and La Catalina, probably not winning. But it's nice that, uh, they've returned. Yeah. From their and, injury. You know, for the, you know, for like the three people that are wondering what are going to happen with the CML World Tag, uh, World Women's Tag Titles, there's your answer. You finally got it. That's true. Now we know they're not phasing them out. They're not just randomly nope. giving them to somebody. Tournament. Tournament. Um, but if Scotty and and Kira win, they relinquish the national belts, don't they? Or do they have to relinquish them? Yes. First, uh, no. Win. If if they if they win if they win the world tag titles, then they, then they have to relinquish. But if they don't win, then they can keep the national tag titles. So, I mean, yeah, I think they should win. Then I'm rooting for Ed on Olympia, but I feel like the more realistic choice is Scotty and Kira. Yeah. Um. Then we had the rest of uh, Team Mexico and uh, international team revealed for the Grand Prix. Absolutely. I can I can give you the Team Mexico uh participants yeah. right here. All ten. Yeah. So should we give like a little explanation? We don't have to go too deep into it because it's still quite a bit away and we can talk about it more when we get closer. But it's ten versus ten, yeah. um, like elimination style, um ten versus ten tag, uh, with a very like big emphasis on like patriotism and uh yeah. like <laughs> Yeah, like, because it's like all these guys are, are on Team International and Team World are representing, like, not only their organizations, but, like, their, their country. countries. Yeah, their countries of origin as well. And then, like, Team uh, Mexico is, like, you know, they came out last year. Did they come out with uh, the Army Band? I think so, yeah. They wear track suits. <laughs> like, they get, like, matching track yeah. suits. Yeah, they Pretty get awesome. track suits. They do, they do a big old meeting. They do a big old conference. It's awesome stuff. They present it really well, honestly. I really like the presentation yeah. of it. Last year. Banners too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mystico. You remember last year, Mystico beat um, 
It was two versus. I think it was Kushida and uh, Kushida Hiromu was and it? Hiromu. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't even remember. I just know that Kushida. I don't know why, but they made Kushida like a goddamn beast out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that he's got 2v1 them. I was like, whoa. I don't you know, good stuff. But Team Team Mexico, I'm I'm getting away from the point here. It is Templario, Ultimo Guerrero, Atlantis Jr., Titan, Mystico, Mascara Dorada, Volador Jr., Esfinge, Euphoria, whoa. and Valiente. What do you think about this team? They snuck those last three in, bro. I know they did. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, <laughs> big hate, big hate on them boys, dude. Valiente is Valiente is really good though. Like I know, but like why, <laughs> why, why is Finkano Foria? Why CML forgive Soberano Junior already, please? <laughs> I keep forgetting he's not on here, man. That that actually does hurt, dude. It's been how many months now? Four, or five. His entire run <laughs> post him and I had those leyendas has been miserable to watch. Been on super punishment. <laughs> Once his dad loses his mask, he might be forgiven. Like, why couldn't you know if you're gonna put someone that you know is getting put up on the cards, why not put Akuma in Team Mexico? I would have preferred that. <laughs> Akuma's teaming with uh Rihanna's here coming up soon. On Saturday. Yeah. That's yes, awesome. Yes, yes, yes he is. Uh, you know, but I don't know why they're sneaking in this garbage Aniversario feud into the Grand Prix, but it's whatever. You think Soberano makes the Aniversario show at all? No, I don't. I yeah. don't. It, it, the only person that might be able to get him in is Rocky, and even that might be a big stretch as of now. Might be tough, yeah. Los Principes, bro, what an idea. <laughs> what an idea. We were so We were so high on them, too. We were like, these guys are going to rock it. Just wait. Los Principes are coming to AEW. Just wait. <laughs> that was the future of Lucha Libre right there. And it just didn't happen. <laughs> Died they, immediately. Yeah, they broke those trophies and it just all fell apart from there. And Bloody is not even a Rudo anymore. Yep. They'd have to get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Team World, um, we can drop the Team World uh, roster as yeah. well. We um, have... Uh... Ikuro Kwan representing MLW and the country of South Korea. Uh, Flip Gordon representing uh, the USA. Yeah. Rocky representing New Japan, uh, US, and the United States. Uh, Robbie X representing Rep Pro in the UK. Kyle Fletch representing Ring of Honor in Australia. Mansoor representing AEW and uh, Saudi Arabia. Akira representing MLW in the United States. Uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. representing the country of Canada and the Let's go. company of MLW. <laughs> uh, Yoda Suji representing uh, New Japan and the country of Japan. And uh, Claudio Casanoli representing uh, AEW and the country of Switzerland. Good lineup, honestly. Yeah. Good, good international team lineup. I'm bigger. I'm, I'm, I think it's better than the Mexico lineup, honestly, because they just have to throw in those three stinkers at the end for team mexico i'm gonna look i'm gonna say something here i would not be mad if team international if team world won this thing you know have, uh, it wouldn't be unprecedented yeah, right. either have that for win <laughs> have uh no give it to give it to castagnoli honestly like no you can, no one. you gotta give it to a good one that's that's the only right answer davy boy davy boy give god it, <laughs> give it to uh the guy that Soups thinks has a very big head, Robbie. <laughs> I think I know he's got a huge head. <laughs> Actually, no. Get have Yoda Suji win the G one, and then have him win the CML. Grand Prix. <laughs> oh, oh my, oh, that's, that's, that's the real. That's, that's the real. real. Yeah, that's, that's what should happen. Dude, I've heard the G one is good this year. What I've heard. I I'm not. Yeah, watching. I haven't watched yet. <laughs> I just like I I gauge um. I don't, I don't I don't do not keep up with New Japan. Um I just like read the timeline. I watch New Japan fans melt down like every <laughs> week. Like every pay per view, every big show they have, there's at least one New Japan meltdown. But surprisingly, for this G one, I've not seen any meltdowns. People are all like, yeah, This is really good. So for them. 
happy for you guys. Happy for you, New Japan watchers and listeners of the show. But yeah, I mean, Grand Prix should be good. Should be good. Yes. Uh, definitely fun stuff there. And the, moving also, on. Also, like like usual, we should be bound to at least have a uh, a singles a single semi main event. So we'll see who has that single same semi main event when the Grand Prix comes. Last year it was a uh, Stuka Junior versus Soberano. That match was really good. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully Maybe they give him. Good. No, they're not. No. They're not. <laughs> a, maybe, maybe that's not like his. He's off his punishment. He gets uh, another chance at the singles match at not the a National chance. Grand Prix. Well, it won't be a Sphinx, so it's gonna. If anything, honestly, I'd just be fine if they do Titan versus like Barbaro Cavernario. That'd probably be good. But Titan's on the team. <laughs> oh shit! I mean, uh, Neon versus. No wait. Oh wait. Can't no, get that one either, dude. You could. We could uh, do. I'm saying. This is Soberano's chance. I feel like if, yeah, if he's almost bugged. Bugged. No way. Yeah. They're gonna do they're gonna do like Angel de Oro. So they're gonna no no or either that they're gonna do, do like Star Junior versus Barbaro Cavernario. You know they're gonna put him oh, in. Oh man. Dog, Dude, Sandokan. Host, like, they're nah, some of us, they don't think that highly of Sandokan just yet. They're gonna do I because I'm pretty Cavernario, I don't think he's gonna be I don't think he's gonna be anywhere international that around that week. So he's probably it's probably gonna be Cavernario or like Stuka versus, you know, unfortunately, Star Jr., but. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you know, it could be oh. Magnus, too. Dude, that's worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, that is way worse. Honestly, if it was me, just give me Angel de Oro versus Barbaro Cavernario. It's the same main event. That'd be good. Yeah. That'd be really good. Um, Yeah. I mean, international international uh, Grand Prix. We, we'll we'll do a. I think we should do a post match might, or a, yeah, yeah, like a we'll post probably, event stream. We might, yeah, we might do like the one that we did for Omenaje Lucy, and that's what we did a stream after the show. You know how funny uh, we. This is like, this is gonna be. This is a little behind the curtains here. We should do like a setup, like a stream setup, where it's like our little guys behind a desk, and then like a news ticker going along going down the bottom almost like a <laughs> almost like a lucha libre sports center you know <laughs> kind of beast something to consider i'm gonna look into that see if we can that's something we can pull Let's off we have the technology for it but <laughs> in uh in other news uh there is a two-for-one ticket deal for triple mania mexico city now in certain <laughs> areas That's that I didn't read about that. I I read that was pretty common though for uh for Super hey, no. hey, so for anybody, you know, dying to see Fresero Jr., there's your chance. He's getting in that cage match. <laughs> Dude, it's gonna be a negocio and they're gonna be in there. I don't know, man. Yeah, Speaking I of triple A though, thank you for bringing okay. that up. <laughs> um We are uh I don't know if we, Bloke is a huge fan of Potro de Acero and uh, no. Whoa, <laughs> La Nueva Polemica de la Lucha Libre. Whoa, um, he has some interesting videos. I like, I like his catchphrase. I like his mask too. We might steal uh, it. His catchphrase, not the mask. <laughs> not, not the, the mask. mask. <laughs> but um, he um, recently he put out a video uh, talking about some rumors regarding um, a new Pentagon Jr. Um, as you know, Pentagon Jr. in AEW goes by Penta El Cero Miedo, right? And like when he's doing outside Triple uh, A bookings, he goes by Penta El Cero Miedo because Triple A owns the Pentagon Jr. name and like they own yeah. that gimmick, basically. Yep. Um, so there's a rumor. All this is all speculation, all rumors. Do not take anything that we're about to say as fact. Take, don't. Take I don't want with a, take this with a bucket of salt. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say none of our listeners are are. Uh, I mean, Both I of the set of viewers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or like none of them. I feel like are clickbaiters either. So like this is, I mean, uh, most people probably are unless you're like tuned into that side. You're not gonna hear about this, but um, they're saying that maybe as a. There might be like a new 
Pentagon Jr. since like Penta's working CMLL and like that's the type of petty thing that AAA would do. I'm not, I'm not me myself. Like, you know, I feel like that'd be a crazy decision, and it makes me very doubtful about it because, yeah, you know, that's just. I just don't think they would do that because Penta's all is so popular that like I don't know, just it wouldn't make sense, you know? Yeah. But then again, sleep player, sleep player. <laughs> so who knows what they could do? What, what do you think, Soup? Do you think it's just awful decision, or, or what? um, what do I think, or what do I want to happen? Because I think I want the hilarious option of a uh, new <laughs> Pentagon <laughs> Junior to happen, and it just be the worst thing we've ever seen. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm I'm not super familiar with the the La Parca situation when they introduced a new one of him, but like La Parca was super super popular. But I don't know. It's uh. I hope not, but at the end of the day, if it fails, it fails. That's true. You got to think too. Like they do this all the time as well. I mean, like yeah, Taurus. Black yeah, Taurus, uh, Octagon Junior, um, Caris La Momia Junior. I mean, Abismo Negro Junior, yeah. and El Fiscal, who's actually Abismo Negro's actual son, but not Abismo Negro Junior. I mean, they do it all the time, and like. I mean, if they do it, highly, highly unlikely that a new Pentagon would reach the same success that Penta has oh, right now, you know, yeah. like almost like a 0.1% chance because, uh, I mean, I think feel like a big reason Penta got it over as much as he is because he has a lot of, I mean, he'd have to have just a ton of natural charisma as well and like, mm-hmm. cero miedo, he can't, you know. Can't do that. They should, uh, they should get Drillis to go to do it. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, man. They're going to get um, Marazzo Dora Jr. to do it. Oh, no. Sorry, right, Flo. <laughs> Sorry you had to learn this way, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> that'd be, that'd be crazy if they did that. Nah, but we'll see where that goes. Like we said, though, all rumors, all speculation. Don't expect anything to come out of that. Uh, really. It's just a fun thing to talk about on here. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. He, he's not somebody that can really be replicated in any way. Yeah. But like, I mean, there's, there were obviously like other Pentagon juniors before him, other Pentagons before him, but like this one without fail yeah. is the most successful, like of all of them. I mean, you could keep doing the gimmick, but it just kind of go back to the old level of what the other Pentagons were. I guess if if he's broken the curse, then they have nothing to worry about. But if not, perhaps have a little fear, you know? A little miedo. Like one <laughs> miedo. <laughs> one or two miedos. But, um, yeah, I mean, what, what, like, going on saying that, um, Goes around, comes around too. Do you guys have any? Again, this is all speculation. Any speculation on what he could be talking about there? <laughs> pigs, bro. He's in the pigs. Because, like, uh, it's like it's like you know that you know how they were doing that whole that very shitty Triple H Thanos Gauntlet meme. It's it's like that, but instead, uh, going out to like like what I said, Junior. Then he's gonna collect the pigs, you know, the and rhinos. That's what he's doing. Yeah, the rhinos. <laughs> he's just gonna be collecting them like that. He's he's uh collecting the gauntlet, the the, the uh, Ciudad de Mexico. Yeah, he's getting the Ciudad de Mexico in the gauntlet. That's what he's getting. <laughs> oh man, um, like to to give some context though, I feel like the situations are way different now though. Like, um, what goes around comes around. The first time was because Stephanie Baquet put on a crazy showcase on a huge AEW show got noticed, got signed out from under CMLL. That same dynamic isn't really at play unless like some WWE guys are watching CMLL and being like, okay, um, we're getting Templario. <laughs> like we're taking Templario hey. out. Yeah. Hey, hey. 
WWE Pro Wrestling here, please. Hey, oh, <laughs> come on, hey, 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 hey. you, please. Yeah, I'll be. No, as Sphinx is an AEW guy. WWE rider, if that happens. I promise you, Sphinx is always posting pictures with his AEW shirts and his AEW. Yeah, he's hoodies. so proud of it. It's like uh, it's awesome. Yeah, he's really happy. <laughs> like he's really happy he was on AEW, which is good for him. He's getting he's getting the most mileage out of the swag bag they gave him. <laughs> what a beast! I would be too, honestly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> He should have. She. He shouldn't have been the member from La Fuerza Tapatia to appear on AEW. It should have been Star <laughs> Black, man. Really? It should have been Star. They're doing it a Star Black Star... feud, right? It should have been. Star... It should have. Uh, I thought it was with Gallero. <laughs> I just, I just interrupted Floke like four times. <laughs> My bad, dog. My bad. It should have. It was Gallero. No, he's. I don't know. He, you know, it's because Ultimo Guerrero fouled him on a Monday, I think. And they're doing a singles match, but then Star Black is feuding with, uh, I think it's Gallero, and Gallero is somehow linked to one of the one of los hermanos Dinamita. I think he was trained by Máscara Año 2000. I might be wrong on that. It was either Máscara Año 2000 or Universal 2000, where he was trained by one of them, and now he kind of has like a Dinamita esque style mask, and they had a pretty good match recently on the same uh, show that the Vianos, which is the the Piratas, happened. That was a good show. That was a good match. Um, I saw some praise for uh, speaking of that Tuesday um, Guadalajara show. I saw some praise for uh, Satanico and Virus. Um, I haven't checked it out yet. I need to check it out. A lot of people talking about it. Uh, talking about how he's 74, putting on a pretty decent match. So check that out if you're interested. It's free. You'll find it online, CMLL's YouTube. Yes. Martes de Glamour. All right. Um, and then we got a big, we got a big Martes de Glamour coming up. Oh, before we get off the CML International News, we have uh, Atlantis Jr. defending his uh, ROH TV title at a... Uh, Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, in a, what's it called? Six, uh, Survival it? of the Fittest Survival Final Six fittest. Way Elimination Match. Yeah, so it's Atlantis Jr., uh, Leo Rush, Lee Johnson, uh, Shane Taylor, Johnny TV, and uh, Brian Cage. And what on do that think? same show, oh, I think, honestly, I'll probably watch after the CML show because, you know, I'm not. I don't. I'm not watching Ring of Honor first. Oh <laughs> shit! That's tomorrow. Hey. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it looks. It looks like. I, I'm not sure how. Is it going to be like a gauntlet style match, or is it going to be? I think it's just like an elimination. Oh, well, I six think man match. I think it'll be good. Yeah. I mean, those name the the lineup of names is really good. So I mean, I don't mind it. I think it'll be a good match. Yeah, you got two big guys, two small guys, and then two. Medium sized dudes. Medium dudes. So yeah, that's they got the formula there. Can I give a kind of a breaking uh capital collision? Zack Saber Jr. Oh, yeah. Titan. Oh my. Singles match. Stole my flow. Oh, you about to say that? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even mention it. We didn't even mention it. <laughs> I we mentioned it. I mentioned it before we started recording. Oh. <laughs> Did you did you hear that, Snoops? I didn't hear it. I did hear him say that. <laughs> oh man! I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you reacted to it. Oh man! <laughs> that's a that's crazy. My I bad, think you folk. said like, oh, that's awesome. Oh, my, my bad. Folk. <laughs> I scooped him crazy. <laughs> oh man. You aggregated Floke. That's that's yeah. beast as hell. According to Floke, <laughs> breaking per the Floke sheets. <laughs> oh man! Per per the Wrestling Observer, <laughs> uh, Tony Khan said it was a concentra- a concerted effort to have more lucha lucha libre stars during uh you know the run that they're having right now in Arlington. Hey man. Good. I think they should do that everywhere they go. Oh yeah, Aramis debuted for AEW. You guys watch that show? No. Nah. 
Now, didn't it? Dude, I don't watch AEW. Yeah, you're, oh, the, you're the AEW. Oh, expert. man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I got better things to do on Saturday. Oh man, dude, I'm <laughs> I'm being exposed here. I'm not, I'm, you think I'm hell no? I watch, dude. I barely watch wrestling on the weekends. I'm sleeping. He's like no one. All right, well, let me just say then. I will say this. Um, they had, they did have, like all all the lucha matches they had were really good. Uh, Mortos and Darby was good. Ray Phoenix and Tony Nice was good. Um, Hologram debut was good against Gringo Loco. And then Thunder Rosa and uh, Diana Peraza. Diana, yeah, Diana Peraza. Uh, that one, if I remember correctly, that one was also pretty. Good. But the first three were really solid, solid matches. So okay. to keep up, like, I mean, it was like three luchadores, four luchadores, five if you count uh, Thunder Rosa as well. Which, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can count her, I guess. Right? Did you guys count yeah. Thunder Rosa? Yeah, she's from the graveyards of Tijuana. Sure. I mean, yeah, but it was good. Um, if they keep it up, the venue looked really good, and then it sounded yeah. really loud yeah. too. So, I, uh, I I looked up a plane ticket to Arlington, and, and then I was like, no, I shouldn't. It's not oh, like man, an AEW go mark for the whole yeah for the whole fucking <laughs> <laughs> five weeks or whatever the hell they're running. <laughs> I did. Oh shit! I did uh, see a poster for a lucha show in Arlington. Yeah, the, I saw that. The one. same night. Yeah, with Ultimo Guerrero and uh, Zero Soxies. Yeah, but it's the same make night. The drive down. I might make the drive. Maybe. He's going to the Arlington show. He's going to the AW show. No, no <laughs> the AW show. The one with Ultimo. The one with that you said. I might. I might make the drive. It's a little far, but maybe. Do it for Ultimo, dog. Maybe. If I do, I'll, if I do, I'll probably send pictures of the, the group chat. And pictures of Ultimo Guerrero, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I do, I'll, I'll definitely do <laughs> And then that. Kyle Fletcher at the Ring of Honor show. No, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Ring of Honor. Um, All right. Enough internet. Actually, wait. Before we get off the international news, uh, the N1, uh, you know, Noah's... Round Robin tournament. They announced a few luchadors that are going to be in there. Uh, you know, Los Golpeadores, Alpha Wolf, and Dragon Bane. Uh, Hijo del Dr. Wagner Jr. is going to be in it. And uh, Luis Monte. Um, they're all going to be in it. And in the opening night, Luis Monte is going to be facing uh, Kaito Kiyomiya. So I think that's happening in about roughly a week, two weeks, something like that. Uh, August fourth. Um, and you know we're you know we're getting close to the end here. Uh, CML did uh release their Saturday and Sunday lineups. Particularly the Saturday lineup looks a lot. The Saturday lineup does look a little better than the sun Sunday lineup. Uh, they have on the Saturday lineup they have uh La Squadra, you know, Villano Tercero Junior and Hijo del Villano Tercero. Teaming alongside Akuma versus uh, Dark Panther, Star Black, and Briante Jr. And then in the main event, they have Volador, Cliff Gordon, and Star Jr. versus Averno, Stuka, and Dragon Rojo Jr. Uh, then on the Sunday show, they have, you know, one decent looking match. They have uh, Stuka versus Titan in a match at Lampago. Um, so yeah, that, that, could be, that could be pretty good. The last time they faced off, it was all right. Um... Not much else in that Sunday show. Um, Mon the Monday, the upcoming Monday show has Star Black versus Ultimo Guerrero, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, oh boy, next Tuesday in Guadalajara, they're having a big show. Uh, La Comarca Lagunera versus Los Tapatios. Um, and you know, as some of you know, I've been I've been rambling about some of these wrestlers from La Comarca Lagunera, and big big debut for some of these guys. We have. Making their CML Guadalajara debut, we have Angel Azteca Jr. making his debut in CML alongside Imperio and probably the biggest one, Sonic is making his CML debut next Tuesday. So, wow, yeah, just you know, I've given super high praises to Sonic as you know, being the young Lucha Prodigy or being just my favorite Lucha Prodigy right now, probably alongside Chelo and 
the fact that he's going to be making his CML debut at just 16 years old is insane to me. So I can't wait to see that match. And if you're not aware, CML, uh, CML's Guadalajara shows are always free on YouTube. And so if you want to watch Sony for the first time in CML, there's your chance. You know, good stuff. Floke stays winning. Yes. For sure. I mean, look, Floke's ahead of the curve on this one, too. He's had his uh, ear to the ground, um, especially with Sonic, keeping an eye on him, watching uh, his matches through YouTube and all that stuff. So definitely defer to the opinion of Floke on Sonic and how good he is. And uh, a lot of these guys are showing up for that Tuesday show. Exciting. Honestly, I, I would be taking a lap right now, Floke. If I were you, I'd be like, "Yeah, I, dog." The fact that I'm getting a Tisero or Shelo on Sunday, and then I'm getting that on Tuesday, oh, well, I'm taking two victory laps. Yeah. Baddest thing yeah. he takes, but great everywhere else. <laughs> no, my, 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 they're 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 probably some of my best takes. <laughs> Ooh, we got anything else? I don't think so. No, I think we've covered all of Lucha Libre. I mean, an hour, eleven <laughs> minutes. It's it's a little less besides than usual. IWRG. But... <laughs> ah, well, Everything we don't. besides IWRG. Yeah, but well, we don't we don't talk about that company. <laughs> All right, well, or the crash. We don't talk. We don't talk crash. Yeah, I guess if that's it, then uh, everyone, thank you for listening. Um, catch y'all next week after the uh, after yeah. we see you know Death Triangle and Mystico Mascara yeah. Volador Junior. Yeah, oh yeah, at the end of the plata. The end of the plata final. Yes. Awesome stuff. All right. See y'all. Later.